Hello, my name is Michael, and I'm a machine learning engineering and AI practitioner. Today, I'm going to talk about DuckDB and how it can be used for AI and why you should care about it. If you are following the news, you might have heard about the lawsuit against OpenAI from New York Times. The New York Times sues OpenAI and Microsoft over AI use of their copyright work. Many organizations are now thinking that they should go to the court with OpenAI. Of course, OpenAI claims New York Times copyright lawsuit is without merit. With all the money they have, OpenAI probably can afford to hire the best lawyer in the world. So in the end, they either win or settle the case by paying some money. So the lawsuit is all about the data. To train the AI model, OpenAI used the data from New York Times. A GPT-3 model was trained with around 45 TB of text data from all over the internet. To prevent OpenAI from using their data, many organizations have added a new line into their robots text file, which disallows OpenAI from crawling their website. So what does 45 TB of text data mean? If you look at the following image, you can see that 45 TB of text data is a lot. 1 PB is 1024 TB, which is around 1 million gigabytes. So let's imagine one byte is one qubit millimeter. Then the following image shows a comparison between 100 KB and 1 TB. So I hope this gives you a better idea how big 45 TB is. So to train the GPT-3 model, OpenAI has to use a large cluster of GPUs. The following videos explains how they did it. And here is the video, like explains how they did it. Uh, you can watch it, so I will not play it now. So after OpenAI released the ChatGPT3 model, many people asked why other big firms like Google did not release their similar products. The answer actually is simple. It's not easy to train the GPT-3 model. I mean, having data is only part of the ticket. I think there are many tricks that OpenAI used to train the GPT-3 model. Of course, it must be a hard engineering work. So I have been testing other chatbots from the Google and Meta, you know, Llama model or Google Bard. They're not as good as OpenAI's. So ever since ChatGPT was released, Many things has changed. You know the story. Many people are trying to build their own GPT models. But it is not easy to train a GPT-3 model. What do I mean by that? Let's say I want to build a mini GPT using 45 gigabytes data instead of 45 TB data. So if the square box is OpenAI now you're looking at, then the small dot, that small dot would be me, who is only using 45 GB data to train a small mini GPT model instead of 45 TB. So here is my hardware. I have 32 core CPU and 32 GB of uh, RAM and two CPU. So not fancy, but as for, uh, you know, a poor machine learning engineering, that's maximum thing I could off afford. So to build a mini ChatGPT model, I need to first collect the data. Here, I choose to collect the text from goodreads.com. After collecting data, we need to clean and process the data. This is a very important step. If you don't do it right, you will get a very bad model. Then we will train the model, deploy model, and maintain it. Now. I have done the collection, so happy moment. As it is showing this animation where I got all those book information by scraping the good reads with those public information I could get. In the end, I got around 2.36 million books with 29 columns such as author, title, rating, etc. The size of the data is around 1.9 gigabytes compressed and around 8 gigabytes uncompressed. I also collect 55 7 million reviews from Google uh, goodreads.com, which is around 7 gigabytes compressed and 30 gigabytes uncompressed. So as you can see, each book could have many reviews. Okay, now we have the data. Let's just read, read in the data with pandas, 
you know, the famous Python library that you would use to read some data and see how it goes. It turned out that my computer crashed. And when I'm using Pandas to read in the data, as Pandas is not designed to handle the large data set, especially Pandas perform very poor on large data when it is in JSON format. So see, this is just one challenge when you're trying to build a ChatGPT model. After doing some research, I found some firms could provide cloud service for big data processing and modern training such as this one, but it still cost me around $500, so not for me. Then I found DuckDB, which is free and open source database. It is designed to handle big data. I'm very happy to find DuckDB. It is very easy to use. I just need to install it and then I can use it right away. Let's see how DuckDB could handle the data. For 1.9 GB compressed and 8 GB uncompressed data, it only takes 6, six seconds six seconds to read in data with my limited hardware. Let me say that again. It only takes six seconds for around eight gigabytes read, which is also in the JSON format. And if you provide the memory usage, you actually it only takes around 1.5 gigabytes of memory to read in the data. This is called true Kung Fu, where Bruce Lee meets America Girl. So DuckDB actually can also process up to 300 GB of data on a single machine. Now with my hardware, finally, I can process the data and clean it well before train a mini GPT model. So, you know, after all those hard work, I said, okay, let me look into the data. I checked the data. I want to have a look at the top 10 books with the most reviews. And one book got my attention, which is called 50 grade. No, not 50 grade. It's 50 shade of gray. It has more than 100,000 reviews, more than 100K reviews. Okay, so maybe I should read this book first before I build my mini GPT model. Anyway, so look at this image. So enough talking about 50 shades of gray. Let's get back to the topic. Why should you care about DuckDB? You should care about DuckDB because it will save you a lot of money and time. We all know only big firms have big data. Even at Google, 90% of all analytics query are less than 1 TB. If we check this image again, you should realize that most of firms sit in the small cube, which is around 1 TB, and that small dot is still me with you know around 50 GB data, which is still quite big for a lot of, you know, like, even a pharmaceutical company, small one, that they have some images, most of the time you collect 50 GB or 1 TB. So if your data is not that big, you probably do not need cloud service. You can just use DuckDB to handle your data. So in 2012, uh, yeah, 2022, David Hansen, the founder of Ruby on Rails, wrote an article called Why We Are Leaving the Cloud. In that article, he said they are leaving the cloud because they can save a lot of money. And how much money they can save? Roughly speaking, you can save $7 million over five years if you are a mid-sized company. So with the modern data stack, having DuckDB doing in-process analytics and post SQL doing the rest, you can do lots of things with spending less money with or without cloud service. This is why you should care about DuckDB and how I love DuckDB now. So here is the list of resources that I use in the video. So happen coding and zoom in to see what I'm searching on Google. See you next time and please subscribe my channel or give me a like if you like this video.